Revelations of fake monks swindling cash out of visitors at an ancient Buddhist temple in Yunnan have brought the debate over business and religion under the spotlight once again. Yeah, police have detained monks from Yen Chuan Temple in Jinxing village on suspicion of fraud. A report in China Newsweek says the temple was being used as a money-making venture by a businessman. Yeah, the suspects were said to have impersonated monks to persuade visitors to buy joss sticks in return for good luck. And uh, far from leading an ascetic life, the paper says the Yen Chuan Temple monks are married, have spacious homes in the provincial capital, Kunming, and even drive luxury cars. According to China Newsweek, the village rented the 1,000-year-old temple to a man identified only by his surname, Long, uh, for 7.2 million yuan. That's well over a million dollars a year. An investigation led by local and provincial authorities showed that only one monk was actually registered as living at the temple. Instead, Long employed bogus monks who signed contracts and were office hours, basically, pulling in money from credulous visitors. Online discussion has ranged from this particular incident to the lack of management and commercialization of religion and temples in general, especially in recent years. And uh, to check on what's being said, let's cross over now to the newsroom and our researcher, Julia Liu. Okay, Julia, first of all, uh, given that the Communist Party here in China is officially atheist, a lot of people outside China might be a bit surprised at just how widespread uh, the following of any religion, never mind Buddhism, is in China. Can you fill us in a bit on that? Uh, well, accurate figures, or any figures really, are very hard to come. Uh, of course, political pressures in the past meant numbers of believers in any religion tended to be widely underestimated. And certainly from the 50s to the 80s, uh, most open expression of religious belief was heavily discouraged. But most surveys put uh, Buddhism, uh, which came here from India, and Taoism, uh, sometimes referred to as China's native religion, uh, as the most popular forms of belief here. And in fact, many people will happily say they are both, and uh, see no problems with that. Uh, the other foreign religions, uh, Islam and uh, Christianity, make up smaller numbers, uh, but both of these are thought to be growing as well. Uh, Buddhism is thought to have first entered China in the 2nd century AD and by the Tang Dynasty. Uh, about 400 years later, it was the most dynamic and influential of all religions. And while many temples were destroyed uh, in the 60s and 70s uh, during the Cultural Revolution, uh, Taoism and Buddhism certainly seems to have bounced back. Uh, research by Purdue University in the United States uh, found that interest in Buddhism has exploded in the last three decades. Uh, it claims about 185 million Chinese follow the religion today. And other sources put it at almost double that. Temples and monasteries are reopening in many places, and new monks and nuns are in training. And many Chinese people who may not be officially Buddhist uh, will be quite happy to visit temples and offer incense. Uh, they have a vigorous belief in the superstition element and will certainly feel uh, it could bring luck if you visit a temple and burn incense uh, or leave an offering there. So given that there are quite large numbers of believers out there, uh, what's the reaction been to this story of monks who are actually swindlers? Oh, well, quite a bit of anger, actually. Uh, a lot of posters are quite emotional, uh, like this one on Sina.com. Temples being rented by businessmen. Since when has our religious belief become a tool for them to make money from? It's so shameful. But um, at the same time, I cannot say uh, too many people feel that surprised at the news. Uh, many have a feeling that uh, temples have been getting too commercialized uh, for quite a while. And Ying Ying Ring uh, gives some examples on Weibo.com. It's no longer unusual to be told you can make a donation by credit card, and you'll be criticized as not sincere enough, or even be warned that bad luck will befall you uh, in the future if you don't hand in enough money. Believe me, uh, this will come back to haunt these guys someday. Well, Xiang Xiang Ling Yizhong Keneng says, just take a look at the projects all over the country where they are competing to build huge gold figures of Buddha. Religious belief is a very successful commercial model worldwide. China is just implementing it in a very obvious way. And uh, of course, some of the best known monks in China, uh, those at the famous Shaolin Temple, don't escape criticism. 
Uh, the Shaolin Temple, uh, which many know of uh, as the uh, legendary home of Chinese Kung Fu, uh, has made headlines in the past few years, uh, especially since its current head abbot Shi Yongxin uh, took over and pushed for it to make more money. Uh, he's a controversial figure, uh, and there have been many accusations about over-commercialization. Uh, for example, the opening of more than 40 subsidiary companies abroad and 130 uh, martial arts clubs in the U.S. alone, as well as the massive commercialization of the Shaolin name. Uh, and uh, Pan Jiang Jiang Gan Zou Sao Rao Mang views it's not only the temples who are to blame, saying on Sina.com. It's already ridiculous enough that a temple asks you to pay for the tickets if you want to visit. And what's funnier is that the money should be handed in to the government. It's actually the government that pushed the commercialization of the temples. Well, it seems it was the local government uh, which rented this Yinchuan temple uh, to this entrepreneur Long. Uh, what have people got to say about that? Uh, well, in fact, this is an issue that's been brought up for quite a few times in recent years. And many people suspect what the poster just now uh, said is a fact that uh, local governments are making money from this as well. Uh, in fact, under China's law, uh, the religious groups only have the temporary right to use the land uh, the temple is built in. They don't own it outright. And like all land in China, it is actually owned by the local government and is considered a public resource. Uh, this poster points out how the procedure works out on 163.com. Usually, a contractor will sign a contract with the local government. In this way, the former owns some of the management rights of the temple by handing in a certain amount of money to the government occasionally. And Liu Zitian says on ChinaNews.com. In fact, it's not a religious department that manages such temples. The local tourism department, public works department, and culture administration department all manage them together. Uh, all of them, uh, especially the tourism department, wants to make a fortune from pushing for more ticket revenue. That's partially the reason uh, behind the popularity of reopening of old temples and the high ticket prices. Well, this figure might be the best proof for this comment. Uh, it's reported that each year the Shaolin Temple earns more than 100 million yuan, which is 15 million dollars uh, from temple ticket sales, uh, the sale of Shaolin products online, and the performance of its monks. And Abbot Shi Yongxin says 70 percent of that income is handed in to the local government. So it's not hard to imagine the sort of profits local governments can get from this sector. Well, uh, finally, this poster says on ensweek.com. The idea that economic profits outweigh everything is now penetrating even normal religious life in China. And it has a lot to do with the local governments who can only see GDP in their eyes. Finally, the belief will find itself lost in the commercial contracts.